Hey guys, it is Miss Simrino. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you're brand new, I am very excited that you decided to join me here today for another speed build. And today we are building in Copperdale. Now, you are gonna notice that this build, uh, when we do finish it, is actually, I'm pretty sure it's facing the opposite direction of the quote unquote front of the lot. Now this is because the lighting on this lot was horrific and I could not deal with it at all. It was making everything look super blue. And no matter what time of day it was, I could not get appropriate lighting on this build. So it's actually flipped when you see it in the gallery. It's not gonna be the most appealing thumbnail, but just know that the build I think looks a lot better than what it shows on the gallery. Anyway, we are building in Copperdale and we are building a little winter cabin. And what's really fun about this is that it is a single story home. I don't make a lot of single story homes because I find them super challenging. I feel like I have to make them really wide or really long to kind of fit all of the rooms that I would want in said build. I just feel as though the exteriors for me end up looking super odd and just not proportional to the inside. But for this one, I was able to find a shape that I liked, though do not be fooled, this took me about four or five different tries. I spent maybe a day or two, I can't really remember, but I spent a day or two testing out different shapes for this build and I was getting so frustrated with myself because <laughs> I couldn't find anything that I was enjoying whatsoever. I just knew I wanted to build a log cabin. I knew I wanted it to be in winter. And I think it's because not only do I struggle with single story homes, but I think I really, really struggled here because not only are the, I think it's technically considered a siding or a paneling, I can't remember, but the exterior paneling, I'm just gonna call it that, is from Outdoor Retreat and it's supposed to be like a log cabin texture, right? But it's very, very flat. So I always struggle trying to use it because I feel like the build will never look the way I want it to. So I struggle with that. I struggle with building in the winter because landscaping in the winter for me is really difficult because everything's dormant and or dead. Like it's, it doesn't look as vibrant. So I can't tell if it looks good and I don't do any terrain paint. I don't do anything. So I don't really know what this build is going to look like in different seasons. You could absolutely loathe the landscaping and you could notice that there really isn't a lot of depth because I don't put terrain paint anywhere, but that is why I struggle with winter builds and building in winter in The Sims 4. But you can see that I did a few different things there with the roof pieces. One thing that I really wish we had were more roofing details that were more so catered towards crafting style homes. So kind of that, that roofing detail I did on the lower roof. And at the top, I used a love seat from Outdoor Retreat. I was gonna say from Granite Falls from Outdoor Retreat. And I made it look like there were actual like 3D logs as part of this log cabin. <laughs> Again, that's what I struggle with is this siding or this paneling just is very 2D. It, it doesn't have a lot of depth to it. So adding those little details up there just gave it a little bit more life in my opinion. And I am just taking some debug plants and pots and trying to figure out how I wanna lay out the landscaping. Cause again, I really struggle in the winter. I also was trying to see if I wanted to use some flower boxes and I did land on these from the Werewolves game pack, though I only use them here on this little piece in the front because all the other windows were technically like on the porches, if you will. And they always bother me if I put uh, flower boxes on windows that are like facing a porch because I always think that your sim is just gonna always knock into them as they're walking up and down the porch. Cause I know I would, that, that's basically why I think that. But now I am just working on the landscaping. Again, I tried to make it look nice considering I don't know what it's gonna look like in other seasons. So I really just surrounded the property or at least the home with these shrubs from the debug menu, some hydrangea pla plants, some like low-lying little daisies. And then I just plopped out a bunch of different pine trees to make it look like this log cabin was off of a dirt road. I mean, it is technically off of a dirt road here in Copperdale. So I wanted it to look like it was really blending in with all of the beautiful trees and landscaping around this lot. I think it's so, so pretty. So I did a little bit of that, but then we move on to the interior. So this ends up being a two bedroom, one bath, which is exactly what I wanted. I didn't think I was gonna be able to get three bedrooms or an additional bathroom in here without sacrificing too much space or sacrificing the floor plan that I kind of sort of had in mind. I knew I wanted to use this fireplace from Cottage Living and I wanted the interior to be a true log cabin. 
So I used the exact same paneling on the exterior and used it on the interior. And the, it did this just reminded me of this. When my husband and I were looking for a house, we went and looked at, I think, one log cabin in our area and I absolutely adored it. I wish that we could have afforded it. We couldn't, <laughs> we couldn't at all. We went to go look at it because I just really wanted to go see it, but it was so beautiful. And I loved how every single room literally just had the log, like the, the logs, like literally the logs that the whole house is built with. There was no like other, there were no other walls put up on the interior. It just looked so, so nice. So I wanted to try to make this a little bit more authentic, which did mean a lot of different brown wood tones everywhere. Like you, you can't escape that if it's gonna be a true log cabin. But I also wanted to make it subtly festive, just very, very subtly. So this isn't like a Christmas build or any other holiday themed build. It is a winter themed build and that's about it. You can kind of sort of see, I got the green couches and then this like red wood coffee table. That's just a coincidence because again, just subtly festive, but I didn't decorate it for any particular holiday. So you could of course do that yourself. If you did download this build, you can swap out, I don't know, different swatches of items or add a few different holiday themed item if you want, items if you wanted to. Really stumbling over my words. But this ends up being the living room and it is open to the dining room. And then there's like an archway that separates the dining space from the kitchen, which is a little bit smaller than I anticipated, but I really like how open these spaces at least feel because the rest of the home is pretty closed off. And you can see that I'm using a few different new pieces from the Everyday Clutter Kit, which I absolutely love so, so much. I may have overused it a little bit in this build, but it's just because I'm so excited about finally having a lot of those different items. So I put that little box with like some, like a chess set and a book and things like that, a pair of glasses. There's like a little sticky note just to try to make it look lived in and well cluttered considering it came from the everyday clutter kit. And I was thinking that the family that lives here really do enjoy fishing. I was thinking ice fishing, especially in the winter. So I did put that fishing decoration up there. I think I used the same one in the mud room, i.e. the entryway of this home as well. I think towards the end of the build actually is when we decorate that. But you can see that that is the dining space as well. I used those chairs from Cottage Living and they kind of sort of have a green hint to them. It's more so teal. So I wasn't going super matchy matchy, but I did try to use a fair amount of like greens and some blues throughout this home. I didn't want to do green and red because then it wouldn't be so subtly festive. It would be super festive and that was not what I was going for. But I did put a few console tables behind this couch just to add a few different decorations that I thought would make it look really lived in and very, very homey and friendly. And then we move on to the kitchen where I use these cottage living countertops. Lots of cottage living in this build actually. And I also tried to squeeze in as much detail as I possibly could in the kitchen. Again, it was an awkward shape, I think, or layout, really not really shape, but layout. But I decided to make the stove and the, um, the hood kind of like a centerpiece of the kitchen. So I did put the stove right there in the center between the two windows. And then I sized up the hood to be like this really big giant one. <laughs> and I really liked it because I actually didn't want to put the overhead cabinets. I didn't want to use too many of them because this particular swatch has yellow fabric and I wasn't really vibing with it with this home. So I thought it worked out really nicely. I also used this console table and put a chair there to make it look like you could informally just like pop a squat and have your coffee there while someone else was cooking or whatever the case is. And again, lots of green. So I did pull out a bunch of different clutter items, a lot from the country kitchen kit, as well as cottage living. Cause we got so many like cozy, rustic, items that you could use in kitchens or just in other places in a home. It did take me a little while to pull everything out because there's so many things now. <laughs> there's so many items in different packs that sometimes I forget an item exists and then I see it in the menu and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this item. How could I have forgotten about this? Why didn't I use this? So I was taking my time trying to pull things out. I definitely put some of those new clutter item mugs from the Everyday Clutter kit next to the coffee maker. And then I put these pots and pans hanging right under the hood. I thought it looked so freaking good. You can of course tell me that you think it's ugly and I'm not gonna be that offended, that offended. <laughs> but I really liked it. I thought it looked really, really nice. And then I just put a little flower decoration here on the center of this fake bar, <laughs> this little fake uh, breakfast table slash island. 
And then I went back into the living room because I realized I hadn't decorated this mantelpiece. So I did take a few more different rustic items to decorate the space. And the most festive thing that I put were these little trees in the mason jars that were from, I think the holiday update, which is technically considered base game a while ago. I don't remember when that happened. It was a long time ago at this point, but that's like the most festive thing that's in this entire build. And now we skip over the hallway because I had no idea what to do with it, but we move on to the primary bedroom. And I did use this bed from Outdoor Retreat. It's probably one of my favorite beds in the game. It is just a very particular style, so I don't use it super often, but I thought it was perfect here. And even though the wood tones don't exactly match, I wanted to use this swatch because of the plaid pattern of the bedspread. I also used the dresser from the Outdoor Retreat game pack. And these rugs from the Werewolves game pack really came in clutch for this build. I used them pretty much throughout the entire build in different swatches because they're kind of distressed, kind of ragged, but I really like the patterns and I like the whole feel. I think it really matched the style that I was going for. I also put this armchair from Cats and Dogs in the corner and then I started to pull out more clutter from the Everyday Clutter Kit to really just add some personality to these Sims. And I don't know why this was such an exciting idea to me, but I put like a little notebook and a water bottle on one side table and then a set of glasses on the other because at night when I go to bed, I put my glasses on my little side table and I might have like a water bottle and stuff too. So it just seemed super realistic to me and that just got me really giddy. <laughs> I was really excited about it. There's also this little jewelry display, a little makeup box, some brand new shoes that maybe one of them just purchased as well, and a little box with a watch in it, which I really enjoy. And now the kids' room, I was struggling because we don't have a single bed version of the bed from Outdoor Retreat, and I really, really wanted to use the patterns from a few different cot-like beds that we had. I was thinking, oh, maybe I can like size it up and like mesh it into another bed, but I knew that wasn't gonna work, so. I started to try different swatches of different beds, and then I thought, why don't we get two kids in here instead of just one? So I pulled up this base game uh, lofted bed and then just decided, you know what, these are gonna be bunk beds. They're gonna have the exact same bed spread. It fits the theme, it matches. It's gonna be a cramped room. It is what it is. So that's what I ended up doing. And I gave them the exact same dresser, and then I added the little like Bigfoot toy <laughs> from the little campers kit, which I really like, as well as the creativity table. And then I just went nuts decorating it as I typically do with kids' rooms. And I'm thinking that these kids are right on the edge of being like a preteen, or maybe one of them is more so a child and the other one is kind of a preteen. They're gonna have to share a room forever, which is a little bit difficult if there's an age gap in any capacity. Um, and it's gonna be more difficult as they become teenagers. I'm assuming teenagers wouldn't like having bunk beds with one another, like with their siblings, but maybe that's just me. Some people might love that. Anyway, it's a very cramped room and I do decorate it though. I, I put a ton of like posters on the wall. I also put the little height chart on the door because I thought that was cute. And then again, I use a ton of like um, the stuff from the Everyday Clutter kit, kit as well as the uh, High School Years expansion pack. There's a few different items in there that I thought really kind of fit what I was envisioning for these kids. I also think that one of them really loves video games. The other one is like really into sports. So I tried to sort of decorate for those things. But again, I think for kids, unless I have an explicit idea for a kid of like this kid loves science or art, I usually put like a, a mesh of different interests in and I try to reflect that in the decorating style because kids can explore a ton of different things and like a ton of different things. But that is pretty much it for the kids' room. And then we just end up decorating the hallway really quickly, as well as the bathroom, which I don't even think I have screenshots of. My bad. <laughs> think I completely forgot. And then we also decorate the mudroom. Because outside, like I said, I don't do a ton of landscaping. I think I put like a fire pit out there with a few different like log seats just to you know be on brand with the build but that is pretty much it for the build so i hope you all enjoyed this one i cannot wait to hear your thoughts and i will catch you next time i post a video and i'll talk to you soon bye
socks every day of the week. Big soft chair, but when I'm old, tackle box and a fishing pole.